Hey guys, it's Friday night here in Manila, so it's time to do our weekend free-for-all, and as promised, I'm going to be doing a comparison, review, and look at the Mopar E-Body, which consists of the Challenger and Cudas from the years 1970 to 1974. Um, I've got cars from Johnny Lightning, Hot Wheels, Greenlight, M2, and Auto World. So we've got the five big ones, I would say. And uh, anyways, I don't have like an exact casting from each manufacturer of the exact same years. Some of them are kind of like one-offs, like some manufacturers only make this one certain model, so it's kind of hard to find, you know, another one to compare. But this will give you a base idea, like who has the best body lines, the best scaling, and so on. Uh, because the cars are pretty much the same from 70 to 74, uh, minus some minor changes, but the body shell itself is pretty much the same. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and start. Uh, I have 15 models out here to kind of go over with you. And we'll go ahead and start with Johnny Lightning. I only have one um, for you guys to take a look at. You've seen the Zinger uh, Cuda and the Zinger Challenger in my Fantasy Car Challenge video. So I didn't bring those back out. I'm trying to show you guys some newer stuff that you haven't seen yet in my collection. This is the 70 Cuda by Johnny Lightning. This is from their Flame series when Tomy owned a company on the small cards. As you can see, it's kind of subtle with the black flames, flat black flames, gloss black body, uh, tunneled ram. Uh, looks like they are trying to mimic a Hemi. As you can see, like the spark plugs and the valve covers. So pretty cool casting. And as I said, like even on the um, Zingers, the body lines and such on Johnny Lightning are pretty good. The scaling's not too bad either. It may be slightly small, but not too bad. They have uh, an older edition of like their 71 Cuda. It's not so nice. It's kind of got the primitive, like, toyish looking body, big wheel openings and such. So, not so good. The Cuda convertible, kind of the same way. The wheel openings are more radius, not squared off on the top like they should be. So, not th that nice. Like, so their older 71 and their 71 convertible is not that great. Um, this is the 70, so I'm not sure if they redid the 71. I think they did, but I'm not sure. But the 70 Cuda itself is pretty nice, as you can see. The sides here, the grill was done nicely. Front valence panel with, like, the fog lights. And this is, you know, a custom, so it's kind of hard to see all the details because everything is kind of blacked out. It's got that monochromatic look. And let's get a look at the tail panel a little better if I can get it to zoom in. There we go. So, did a nice job on the tail lights and crude emblem and the back valence panel. So this is one of the cheaper models with the composite plastic wheels, five spokes. But still, these are nice. I know they're not rubber, but still, they have a nice look to them since they did two-piece, like chrome wheel and then the black plastic tire. So not too bad. So hats off to Johnny Lightning. And let's get another crew to the kind of compare scaling. Like, so green light here is this is their 70 Cuda. So the scale scale is pretty close to being the same. Um, the width of the green light is a little bigger, as you can see. It's not as narrow. That's maybe the downside of the Johnny Lightning, maybe a little bit narrow, but still not a bad casting. So since I got green light out here, let's take a look at him. 
This is their 70 CUDA model. They did a very nice job on it. The downsides of this casting. A lot of people complain because Greenlight has really fat, wide tires. Which, yeah, I will say that's a downside of it. But the rally wheels are done very nicely. And from a side profile view, it looks outstanding. Uh, also has a plastic roof because it also um, is their convertible model. So to kind of save a little bit of money, they did the one casting and then made plastic roofs to insert. So very nicely done. This even has like the red in the grill, like the original 70s. So very cool. Shaker hood on this one. This is more of an original with the Hemi, the motor details. Pretty nice. This is a nice subtle Hemi Cuda blue with a blue stripe. So, this is also got the bumpers made to the casting, but this, since it's got the detail painting, it's, uh, you could say, a little nicer than the Johnny Lightning, but hard to say because everything's blacked out in the Johnny Lightning. So this is a very nice casting by Green Light. So that's their 70 Cuda. Now here's their version of the AER. You've seen this in my uh, Police Chase video. Actually, not this one in particular. It was another orange one without the vinyl top. So, this is their AAR 340 six pack car. Nicely done with the correct hood, everything. So, they do pretty well with the castings, like making everything error correct with like the right accessories, the right options, the right hoods, even the six pack 340 in here, the correct air cleaner and such. So, very nicely done. Um, So yeah, this is very cool. The strobe stripe on the side. Very nice casting. Um, now here's their 71. And they did a nice job with this. It's a shared uh, casting in a way. Uh, like this does have the typical 71 features, the guild fenders. And this is the Gone in 60 Seconds model. The Panther Pink or Moulin Rouge. I forget what Plymouth called it. If it was Panther Pink or Moulin Rouge. But anyways, the double headlights. The iconic, uh, iconic uh, 71 grill. Also shaker hood. This one's got the black shaker instead of the graphite shaker. There's your Hemi. So very nice. I'm trying to get this to focus a little better. Let me move the camera slightly. There we go. Maybe that'll be a little better for you guys. Sorry about the focusing problem. So here you go. The trumpet tailpipes going through her uh, exhaust tips. Her tailpipe is going through their rear valence panel. Very nicely done for a 71. And once again, I think I've told you guys this before, but 71 is my favorite year for Mopar in general. Uh, for the B bodies especially, but the E bodies too. Um, so here is the convertible. A couple other people try to go with the convertible, but Greenlight makes the best convertible E bodies. The Challenger was just released a couple months ago. I don't have it, but it's also very nicely done. Johnny Lightning does both. As I said, Johnny Lightning's wheel openings are a little bit off. And then they also did a Challenger convertible, but the front end is way too low. It looks like the K member is broken in half or something. So not that nice on the Johnny Lightning convertibles. So green light makes the convertibles. As we said before, downside is the fat tires. And as you can see, same car, what they do is they put the top boot back here and have a different 
glass insert. So shared casting with the hard top. As I said, you can kind of see here the line where it kind of meets where the paint or plastic was molded and it kind of chipped. You can see how the roof lifts off. This one actually broke a little bit before when I was moving them around. So you can see that it is a plastic insert. So, very cool car. So I don't mind that there's a plastic roof on it. Auto World does that with some of their castings too, like the 62 Chevy, the 64 Galaxy. So it's a common thing for these manufacturers to do to save money on having multiple different molds and such. So pretty nice for the convertible. Now let's look at the M2 Cuda. This is M2, only does a 71. Wish they would do a 70. M2's body is pretty nice. Uh, the body lines are good. Sometimes these opening parts can throw off like door gaps and things like that. Then as you can see, like the hood doesn't close too well on this one. Uh, this is also a modded one with like a red shaker and flames and stuff. This one has multiple pieces though, unlike the green light, separate bumpers, separate grill, separate fog lights, things like this. Um, but to be honest with you, I still think green light takes the cake with the 71, with the detail in the grill and such the bumpers, the front panel. Sometimes all the separate pieces are not the answer. I don't mind if it's molded in as long as it's detailed nicely and stuff. So I'm going to say green light wins on the CUDA. Um, here's Hot Wheels rendition, but this is specifically built for like the uh, Vintage Racing Series. This is the AER, um, which they did a very nice job on theirs too, but lacking some grill detail and headlight detail as usual, Lee Hot Wheels does. Um, the tail light panel is done nice. And then sometimes the I've noticed like the Hot Wheels Mopar e-bodies are a little small, but actually this one is pretty good. It's better than the um, Johnny Lightning because the width and everything kind of matches up to the green light. So not bad by Hot Wheels. Um, and this is a pretty rare car, pretty cool car. This is Dan Gurney's AAR Trans Am Series car. So very nice die cast to have. Greenlight also made this car with a hauler. I think, no, not with the hauler, but they made this one. And then his teammate, which I can't remember his name, but it was number 42. Um, so those were nice to have too. But uh, I do dig the Hot Wheels one. They did a very good job on it. So... Since we're on Hot Wheels, we're done with the CUDA. So that's my overall view of the CUDA. I'm going to say green light wins with it, even though they had the plastic roof. Uh, tires are a little bit wide, but still yet uh, looks pretty good. Pretty much spot on with scale, everything. Details look great. Hot Wheels is not bad either. It's a close contender. Um, so anyways, let's go to the Hot Wheels, and I'll start with the Hot Wheels Vintage Racing 70 Challenger TA of Sam Posey. This one bef you've seen before in my Mopar Challenge, I believe, and in my Race Car Challenges, I think. But this has a huge front spoiler on it, but that was for the Trans Am series. No rear spoiler on it, um, but I think that was something else they did. Uh, the stance is perfect for the TA series. The way the hood is made, I think, is correct too. But I know they kind of did a plastic insert like it was a shaker. So they kind of tried to share the shaker hood of the mainline casting with the TA Challenger. Because they do have this casting um, 
in main line, but I think this one they modded to give it the TA look. So this is a very cool casting though, Sam Posey's car, detailed with the lights, everything. So very nicely done by Hot Wheels. Uh, once again, green light makes this too. Um, it's not bad. I have the green machine version of it. I just didn't bring out any of my chase stuff tonight. I just wanted to stick with stock castings or as close to stock as possible and not do the chase stuff. But uh, anyways, yeah, this is very nice. Um, also, Hot Wheels has an earlier release, 70 Cuda, that you may see uh and it has a plastic roof insert but it's horrible it doesn't look too good the dan gurney car in the hall of fame series is very nice with the tampos rubber tires but it's the old casting with the plastic roof and it does not look good at all because they try to do the same thing as green light sharing the casting of their convertible main line with the hard top main line and it just not did not go over too well and even the designers realized that and then they made a new casting so this is another hot wheels that you guys just recently seen in the chase video the chase challenge this is the 346 pack ta challenger by hot wheels uh also has a big front spoiler on it a little bit Overkill, I think, for a stock TA, but um, the hood's correct, the way it has the big snorkel scoop, and it's blacked out because I think it was a glass hood. So the spoiler is a little big, too. Uh, the wheels are modern-style wheels, but overall, this car is very nicely done. Multiple-piece car from the Hot Wheels 100% series. Separate bumpers, tail lights, and stuff made together. Detailed chassis. So overall, I'm going to say that this is very nice for a TA. Greenlight has them too, but the only TA Challenger I had from Greenlight was, once again, a green machine. So I couldn't bring that out to show you guys. I could have, but I wanted to stick with stock ones, and this guy's been beat up just a little bit not too bad the spoiler got chipped because we dropped it a couple weeks ago unfortunately moving things around um but yeah this is very nicely done by hot wills their ta challenger uh they did make this in like an oil can too in like a sublime green so you can find it in one other color variant but they were both from the 100 percent series so this is the Hot Wheels 71 RT Challenger, which is a little bit small uh, of a casting. Actually, these both are the um, 70 TA and the 71 RT. are both a little bit small, as you can see, like comparing to their 100% casting. It's much bigger, much more to scale with the 100% casting. This is still very nice, though. This is from the Garage Series. This is the Green Lantern Challenger from the Garage Series. Um, very cool car. Lacking light details, though, like on the rear tail panel. The front, though, has headlight detail. Um, so, not bad. It does have the split grill like a 71 should. It has the quarter louvers as the RT 71 option. So it is nicely done. The rear bumper though is a little bit obscure because it is like the rear bumper and then the rear valence panel and everything is part of the die cast chassis. So it looks like it just has a one huge rear bumper. But, yeah, if you look at it closely, you can tell it's all separate pieces. They should have had it painted orange, maybe, but um, not too bad, though. So this is also nice casting. Then we will move along to Auto World. I have an Auto World 70, but as you guys seen in one of my other videos, the paint was 
pretty bad on it because it had paint rash out of the package. Something happened, I think, because of the intense heat and humidity here. So I kind of scuffed it up and gave it this rough, like, resto needed look. It has, uh, like where I took the green scotch pad and scuffed up the paint a little bit, took some of it down the bare metal, kind of hazed over the windows and such, checked the white letters off of a couple of the tires and things. Auto World does a really nice job uh, on theirs too, but these Mopar Rally wheels are too small in my opinion. They just don't look proper. So they're a little bit too small. Uh, the offset's not right. So that's the only thing that they did not nail is the rally wheels. Everything else on their casting is pretty nice, though. Engine details much better than, like, green lights. Um, the scaling's correct. It's a one-piece casting with, like, the bumpers molded in, just like... The green lights so very nice i have their 72 version they're the only company that does like the 72 to 74 in a very nice detailed casting there it is this is much better because it has the magnum style wheels these are more accurate i would say um and the tail panel everything they did perfectly on the car um the magnum rallies are much nicer on the Challenger, or on the Mopars, period, comparing to the Mopar rallies. So Auto World nailed it with their 72 to 74 casting. So they're the only company that I'm aware of. Green Light doesn't make these years. Uh, Hot Wheels may, but I don't think so. Johnny Lightning may too, but I don't think so. I think Auto World is the only company that offers the 72 to 74 Challenger. So very nice Challenger. Um, so let's take a look at the green light Challengers. Here's the 71 green light. This is one of my favorite Mopars actually that I have in my collection. The only thing they lacked on is a, they could have done a little better with like the f quarter panel louvers. This is just a decal, I think. It's nothing more than that. So they could have made like a separate piece and put on there. They did nail it with the grill and stuff. The grill looks really nice. It's got the rally style hood. Hemi. Tell lights are good. The rear tell panel. So everything's perfect. And even like the little quarter louvers, you can see they're just not defined enough, in my opinion. So should have had like scoops there. But still, yet, not a bad casting. And uh, once again, the wheels are a little bit wide, unlike on most. So here is the only. Uh, Challenger that I have with a shaker hood and I love this casting too because of the dog dish hubcaps with the stillies painted plum crazy to match the car very cool casting with this just look with the poverty or dog dish caps some people say poverty some people call them dog dishes but I love this look with the steel rims color match to the body no spoiler, nothing like that. The only thing that says it's a badass is this shaker hood. Everything else kind of has that subtle, like maybe even six-cylinder look to it. And black vinyl top. Now here is the same car, but with like the white side stripe and Mopar rally wheels and the rally style hood. So pretty much the same car, just different stripe and different wheel and hood package. So, and also the green light Challenger sets a little low in the front. I wish I had like the Vanishing Point uh, Johnny Lightning because their stance on their car is pretty good. Uh, I would say the Johnny Lightning Challenger is pretty nice. Uh, green lights is nice too, but as I said, the stance is a little bit off. Here's the last one I'll show you guys tonight because I'm trying to 
keep this at 25 minutes, but I'm going to go over a little bit. This is the Sassy Grass Green or Sublime Green, whatever you want to call it. Um, I forget which manufacturer called it which, but this is a 70 RT with the Rally Hood. Finding a green light challenger with the shaker is not common. They're more rare. The Cuda is not uh, that rare. Most of the Cudas had the shaker, unless it's like their AAR, and then it has that uh, rally touring style hood with the center scoop. So very nice car. So overall, all of them are great. I like all of them that I showed you tonight. Uh, as I said, I pointed out some of the flaws on certain things, like the 71 RT from Hot Wheels is a little bit underscaled. Um, then the TA Challenger also is a little bit underscaled from Hot Wheels. The Cuda from Johnny Lightning seems to be okay, a little bit narrow, so it may be slightly underscaled too. The green light and Auto World and Hot Wheels 100% seem to be on the money with the scaling. And then, as I pointed out, the pros and cons of each. So, guys, this is it for the e body comparison, review, and overlook of all of them that I have. This isn't my whole collection. I have like 30 or 40 e-bodies, but as I said, I try to keep it a little bit simpler to point out some of the certain details of these cars. But anyways, um, Monday I will be doing another uh, unboxing of premium cars. I'm probably going to do something with Mini GT on Monday. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be Euro or JDM or what it may be, but it will probably be Mini GT. If I don't go in that direction, then it will probably be green light muscle cars. But pretty sure I'll do Mini GT. And then I seen that there's another challenge going on. I don't have many convertibles. As you can see, the Cuda, that's like one of like maybe two or three convertibles that I have. I may do a short challenge video for the convertibles because I have a couple top up convertibles but anyways I'll see what happens I don't think I have enough to make a sufficient video though but we'll see uh, anyways guys I appreciate you watching thank you for subscribing if you haven't done yet please remember to do so um, and please like and share comment and I will get back to you guys so Sorry that this video went a little longer than I said they were going to go, but uh, it takes a lot to tell you guys about all the details of the different models and point out the pros and cons of each. So, hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for going over, but uh, tune back in Monday and check out the premium unboxing video. Uh, have a great weekend, guys. Stay safe. See you on Monday.